We're continuing our studies in Chapter 22 on Protein Synthesis, and in this lesson we'll be looking at the initiation of translation. The initiator tRNA in prokaryotic systems delivers a modified form of the amino acid methionine. Remember, the universal start codon is AUG, and it always specifies methionine. That is true in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic systems. However, in prokaryotic systems, they deliver their first methionine in a modified form, in 4 meal methionine, and that's a part of our illustration here. Methionine is in green, it's attached to the tRNA in red, and it's been modified at that alpha amine group by adding a 4 meal group. So again, the initiator tRNA in prokaryotic systems is a tRNA carrying n 4 meal methionine. As we'll see a little bit later, oftentimes proteins are modified after translation, and so this first amino acid might not be present in the final product. However, the first amino acid added in the nascent or initial chain is always methionine in eukaryotic systems in formula methionine in prokaryotic systems. Let's look at that process of initiation in prokaryotes. It begins with a base pairing interaction between the 16S rRNA of the small subunit and a specific sequence within the messenger RNA which is called the Scheindel Garno sequence. You may also see this referred to as the ribosome binding site. It is a conserved sequence, and so what you're looking at here is, is the sequence specific interaction between the rRNA and the small ribosomal subunit, and that conserved sequence is highlighted in purple here. It will complementary base pair with that Scheindel Garno sequence in the mRNA colored in blue. The ribosome will then look for the first AUG and use that as its start codon. So this in prokaryotic systems is how the ribosome properly positions itself to translate the message. Remember, if we begin at the wrong place, we'll have an incomplete and therefore inactive protein. Here we have a figure from your book illustrating the summary of translation initiation in prokaryotes, although I've modified that slightly as we'll see. So again, as we saw in the last slide, the first thing that occurs is the complementary base pairing between the 16S rRNA in the small subunit with the Scheindel Garno sequence in the mRNA, and that properly positions the small subunit. The next thing to occur is to bring in that initiator tRNA. Through complementary base pairing between the anticodon of the tRNA and the codon of the mRNA, we have properly positioned the tRNA here. You'll notice it's delivered to the ribosome through an initiation factor, IF2, and that factor is bound to GTP. So this is a G protein. It, IF2 will not associate with tRNA molecules unless they're properly charged with their amino acid. And that's how we ensure that we don't deliver an empty tRNA and are unable to either initiate or continue to extend the polypeptide chain. Not part of the original illustration in your book, I've added two other initiation factors important in, that pro in this process. First, IF1 blocks the A site to prevent anything from entering there until we've properly assembled our initiation complex. IF3 associates with the small subunit, and that blocks the large subunit from binding until we're ready for it to bind, until that first tRNA has associated. So again, the order is first the binding of the small subunit to the mRNA, then the delivery of the initiated tRNA by IF2. The next thing that occurs is the association of the large subunit with the small subunit. That triggers hydrolysis of GTP bound to IF2 and that releases all of the initiation factors and we see that on the left here. IF2 is released now bound to GDP. Both IF1 and IF3 have been released also. Now we have the properly assembled large and small subunit. It's properly positioned to begin translating the message and we have our first tRNA molecule in place. 
Initiation in eukaryotes begins differently, and remember the mRNA has been modified. We've added a 5' prime cap and a poly 8 tail, and that's how in eukaryotic systems we identify an RNA molecule as one that needs to be translated. The cap and tail associate with one another, and so we have a circularized mRNA molecule. The initiation factors that bind recognize that 5' prime cap and poly A tail. There are 12 initiation factors in the eukaryotic systems, and they're denoted as EIFs, that small e indicating eukaryotic. So these initiation factors assemble, and that's how the small subunit knows where to bind to begin properly translating that message. It will scan and find that first AUG. And again, the tRNA, the initiator tRNA, has been delivered through EIF2. Eukaryotic initiation factors of translation are often G proteins, and as we'll see, GTP hydrolysis drives conformational changes and will drive this whole process of translation. In our next video lesson, we'll look at the mechanism for the elongation of translation, that is to continue to extend that polypeptide chain. We'll see the factors involved and the roles that they play.